Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Section 2.8, the last part of Chapter 2. We're going to continue on from our Section 2.6. We are omitting 2.7. We'll talk about that uh, a little later. Last class, we very simply had a look at how to write a KEQ expression. Today, we're going to throw some numbers at you. We're going to look at two scenarios. Uh, there are four total. We'll do two this video and two the next video. The first scenario is calculating the value of KEQ at equilibrium. I'm going to simply give you the numbers, you put them into the expression, and you solve. Very, very simple. If the system is not at equilibrium, then we have to do uh, something pretty fancy. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So when the system is at equilibrium already, all we need to do is write out the expression, plug in the numbers, and solve for the final answer. So in our question number one, we have a two liter container, six moles of that stuff, three moles of that stuff, two moles of that stuff. We want to find the KEQ. Well, first we need to write out the expression. So it's products over reactants, uh, coefficients are exponents, and we are ignoring liquids and solids. Then we need to plug in the concentrations. And remember, concentration is big M and it's moles per liter. In our questions, we have moles and we have liters. So it's 6.00 divided by 2, which is 3.0, 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5, and 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So we're going to plug those numbers into the expression. Uh, 3.0 squared over 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5 squared, and 2 divided by 2, which is 1.0, nothing. Plug all that into the calculator, and you're going to get your final answer. You get a value of 4.0. There are no units for KEQ. This is simply a number to know how far it has shifted to the right. Remember, a large number means you've made a lot of products, and a smaller number, or less than one, you've made more reactants. Why don't you give this next one a shot and see what you get. And we'll chat about the answer to this one in class tomorrow. In the second example, we are not going to be at equilibrium. We are going to have a few pieces of data given to us. We're going to be given us an initial piece of information, and a change, and an equilibrium piece of information. And in the notes on screen, I'm going to try to keep things color-coded. The initial information will always be blue, the change in concentration will be green, and the equilibrium concentration will be red. And I'm going to try to keep that going throughout these notes. You can see where the numbers are coming from and how we're using them. This type of problem is called an ICE table, I-C-E. When I is for initial, C is for change, and E is for equilibrium. Let's do one or two of these together, and I think you'll see that there's a real pattern here, and this is not going to be a huge stretch of your ability at all, even though this is going to be totally new. So, so the question we're going to be looking at is this one right here. Okay. It's dramatically different than the first one. We are given initial data. It says initially N2 is 0.32, and H2 is 0.66. What we want to find is the concentration of H2, use the concentration of H2 at equilibrium to find the rest of the ions, sorry, the rest of the gases at equilibrium and the KEQ. So it's not simply, hey, we're at equilibrium, here are three numbers, plug them in to get KEQ. We have to do a few things. So you have to sort out this information into initial and equilibrium. And we're going to put it in something called an ice table. And you have one in your notes made for you already. We're going to have the equilibrium up top and the concentration I, C, E down the side. And we're just going to start plugging in the information that we know from the question. So it told us in the question that this was the concentration of N2 and 0.66 was the concentration of H2. If we are told nothing about NH3, then we can assume that the concentration is zero. We were also told that at equilibrium, the concentration of H2 
was 0 0.30. So I'm going to do that in red, 0 0.30. So we are given information that allows us to find the change. We know that if the H2 started at 66 and went down to 30, it must have decreased by 0.36 decreased by 0.36 because it started at 0.66 and when it reached equilibrium it was at 0.30. We know that everything has to change according to the ratios. That's what we graphed in class a few days ago. Well this ratio is a 1 to a 3 to a 2. So if H2 decreased by 36, N2, the reactant, also has to decrease but it has to decrease by the ratio of 1 to 3. So this is going to go down by 0 0.12. 0 0.12 is a third of 36. NH3 is a product. If the reactants decreased, the product is going to increase. This is like shifting to the right. So if the product started off at 0, it can only go up. You can't have a negative molarity. So it has to increase by a factor of 2. So if N2 went down by 0.12, this has to go up by 0.24, double of what N2 did. Now the ratio is 1, 3, 2. Now that we know the changes, we can find the total equilibrium concentrations. We've almost done the question. It started at 32, went down by 12, it's now at 20. This started at 0, went up by 24, it's now at 24. So we now know how this equilibrium started, how it changed, and how it ends. To finalize this question, we want to solve for the value of KEQ. So it's products over reactants. N2 H2 cubed. Plug in your data. 0.24 squared over 0.20 times 0 0.30 cubed. Plug it into the calculator. You're going to get a value of 10.6. That is the value of KEQ. So that is an ice table. Let's do this one more time. I'll talk a little less and see if you can follow along. Here's our equilibrium. It says initially we got 0.8 moles of that. 0.6 moles of that in a 1 liter container. It's, it's allowed to reach equilibrium. And then at equilibrium, we have 0.56 molar of NOCl. So we know we have to use an ice table. So we're going to start off by writing out the equilibrium. 2 NOCl. I'm going to put my I, C, E down the side. And let's start plugging in what we know. Well, initially, we're given that 0.8 moles of NO and 0.6 moles of Cl are in a 1 liter container. Well, big M is moles over liters, so we got 1 liter, so 0.8 divided by 1 is 0.8 molar. So this is going to be 0.8 molar, and the Cl2 is going to be 0.6 molar, and we're given zero information about NOCl, so it's zero. Then we're given that NOCl at equilibrium is 0.56. So we have enough information to find the change. This must have gone up by 0.56. So if this is going up by 0.56, it's a 2 to 2, which is like a 1 to 1 ratio with NO. So this has to go down by 0.56. Then there's a 2 to 1 ratio there. So if that's going down by 0.56, this is going down by 0.28, half of what NO is doing. So we now know the changes of them all, which helps us find the equilibrium concentrations. NO started at 80, went down by 56, now you're at uh, 14. No, 24. 60, going down by 28, you're now at 0.32. So we now have the equilibrium concentrations of all the species. NO is 0.24, equilibrium Cl2 is 0.32. Now we'll plug that into the expression to solve for KEQ. KEQ equals products over reactants over NO 
squared times CL2. Plug in all the numbers, 0.56 squared, 0.24 squared times 0.32. Now I have my calculator here. Uh, I believe the answer was 17. Okay? So that's the general ice table. You guys are going to do a couple of those tomorrow in class, and we're going to leave it right there.